on the subject of the transition, I know Donald Trump's refusing to concede the election, but the transition is still moving forward. It was delayed to begin with. But now Joe Biden is saying that it's not going as smoothly as it should. Today, he says he's meeting some political resistance within the Pentagon, Clint Watts, and also within the Office of Management and Budget. He also said this about his concerned uh, concern about where the agencies currently stand and, and how they have been um, dismantled over the past four years. Take a listen. The truth is, many of the agencies that are critical to our security have incurred enormous damage. Many of them have been hollowed out in personnel, capacity, and in morale. In the policy processes that have atrophied or have been sidelined, in the despair of our alliances and the disrepair of those alliances. A two-part question, Clint. First part, if Joe Biden's not getting the full picture of where we stand with our national security from the Pentagon, what is at risk, number one? And number two, in order to overcome that and then also to rebuild agencies, what is Joe Biden going to need to do? I think on the First thing, Katie, that we should note is there may not be a picture, meaning we don't actually know what's going on in a lot of these agencies. If you just look at the turnover, the number of firings, number of resignations, the number of people currently on vacation, uh, I think part of the problem with the whole baton handoff is there's no one handing the baton off because there's no baton in some ways. And this has been pretty consistent, I think, with lots of folks I've talked to, whether it's Department of Defense, you know, Justice Department, other parts of the government. There's so much turnover, so much, so much turmoil. There's not really a picture to even be grabbed onto. I think that really speaks to what will be the next thing. I, I see a major lull over the next six to nine months where if you're a new Biden appointee, you're coming into any of these agencies, there's not much of a handoff. You've got to take several months to really get your hands around what is going on in these departments, what is going on in these agencies, and then try and pick up and actually move forward. And I think at the same point, you, you've got a lot of, you know, mid-tiered uh, civil servants that have been there for four years that are exhausted, that have just tried to get through on these jobs. They're going to need support. And I think they're going to be looking to these appointees for direction. And we won't have that long. We've got a pandemic. We've got Russia and China as big foes. We've got the Iran situation in the Persian Gulf. We have major problems going on in cyberspace across the board. What you're going to see is a lot of challenges hitting all at once and a lot of people trying to figure out what has happened in these agencies over the last three to four years. What do you think he was told by these national security experts in this meeting today, Clint? Yeah, I think he was just probably told like, hey, we need to get our hands around what the vision of America is going to be in the future. And my biggest concern really going forward is that the new administration will try to come in and rewind that it's 2015, meaning that we are suddenly going to be able to create the world back in our image and the way we wanted it to be come 2016, that we're going to look at uh, maybe rebuilding alliances. But I think with our partners around the world, they watch what's going on today. They see President Trump, his actions in the last month here, and what will probably continue post-inauguration. And they probably look at the U.S. and say, hey, it's a 50-50 chance that we'll have President Trump 2024, President Trump Jr., uh, or a Trump uh, acolyte that will surface in four years. And do we really want to build these alliances again? It's going to be a tough road to go in terms of national security. And we do not want to be alone. If you look across the board right now, our allies of old are, are wavering. They're looking at new options. Some of them are taking on Chinese technology. Others are reaching to China and other countries for help with COVID. The U.S. has not had a strong place, and institutions like NATO and the United Nations are far weaker. So I think in terms of playing our cards and rebuilding our strength, we are definitely sailing into the wind uh, come this next year. In this resistance that Joe Biden is meeting, Jill, one of the political appointees that's being named is uh, Kash Patel, who's the chief of staff at the Pentagon. Who is he and why might he be resisting a full transition, full transparency with the Joe Biden transition team? 
You know, there, there have been a lot of kind of mixed messages that have, have been coming from the White House and, and from the Pentagon, particularly. You know, you have to go back to, to when this all started. And, and, of course, the administration dragged its feet in even being willing to participate in any transition activities. You had uh, messages coming down uh, from political appointees to, to agencies across the federal government saying, do not engage with the Biden people. If they call, please report it to us. We don't want you helping them out at all, creating that initial delay that really alarmed, um, you know, Biden's staff as they tried to, to prepare to, to be in there on day one. And people, you know, in this government remain very loyal to the president. Cash Patel, for instance, is somebody who um, grew very close to the president uh, over the course of the campaign. He's someone that reporters often saw, for instance, aboard Air Force One, uh, somebody who is seen as is very much a, a loyalist to the president. And, and, you know, going to this holiday period and as we get closer and closer to the transition period, the fact that there are still complaints from, from the Biden incoming team, uh, that they're not getting the information they need and, and feeling alarmed about this is really is really stunning, given that this, this administration had claimed that it was kind of moving forward and, and willing to work with these people. And just to kind of you know, I always think of this example as we try to explain to people sort of what the real life ramifications of this are, um, but always think about the 9-11 the report and how the delay in the transition yeah. in 2000 um, between Bush and Gore, uh, that dispute was was cited in that report as one of the potential reasons why 9-11 happened, because people were not fully up to speed. So, you know, we kind of think of this in the abstract of people not receiving briefings, people not knowing what's happening, but there are potential real life consequences to this kind of foot dragging that we're seeing in the final weeks of this administration as the president continues to refuse to acknowledge that he lost this election. And we're amidst multiple crises right now. Uh, Alexi, let's look ahead to, to Wednesday. The president's holding a, a sort of rally, I guess, on the 6th. So that, that is the day of the congressional certification of the electoral uh, college results. There's also this lawsuit now by Louis Gohmert saying that Vice President Pence is the only one that should be allowed, which electors uh, should be allowed to actually cast their votes. How much pressure is Mike Pence facing right now, who is, I believe, currently on vacation in, in Colorado? Look, sources close to the president who have discussed this with him tell Axios that the president views Pence doing his job, the role that he is supposed to do on January 6th, as the ultimate betrayal to him. He's taken issue, sources say, with a Lincoln Project ad that has depicted Pence as not being a good enough fighter and not being in President Trump's corner enough. And we all know, over the course of President Trump's presidency, we've seen how he's really kept folks close to him who want to go out and be fighters for him on TV and otherwise in press conferences in different ways we see. And Mike Pence has sort of been behind the scenes, sort of staying quiet throughout this process. And now he's got the, the job again that's described as the ultimate betrayal because he could be the one to certify the election in favor of Joe Biden and against Donald Trump. And that is not something that Donald Trump can wrap his head around. In fact, it's something that sources close to the president say he's been thinking about for weeks. And we even know that ahead of the election, he was thinking about different ways to muddy the waters and, and question the election results by, you know, claiming victory prematurely. So the president has really been thinking through different ways, not just with his vice president, Mike Pence, but otherwise about how to muddy the waters in this whole situation, how to put pressure on those around him, including VP Pence. And, you know, we're in for what I imagine will be a wild ride on January 6th. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.